Hello and welcome to another edition of this. Uh, it's Q&A this week of course, thank you for all your questions, but I do just want to say next week it's the big haircut where my son Leo is going to be let loose on my lovely hair. Uh, we're raising money for Comic Relief. Thank you to everyone who has made very generous donations so far. We're well over 50% of the target already. If you haven't made a donation and you would like to, the link is down below. I'd be very grateful. And don't forget to watch to see what on earth he does to my hair next week. But for now, Q&A. MKXZ asks, how did you and Robbie Knox first meet? Well, we both went to the University of East Anglia in Norwich. Uh, he was a year below me, but we were both quite active on student radio, live wire, 94.9, I think it was, AM. And uh, I remember the first time we spoke, I think, Robbie was doing a show, and I think I was, I was either station manager or about to become station manager, and I was sitting outside in the office bit, and they were talking about Euro 96, and I, um, and they were talking about who's going to be the top scorer in Euro 96. And I just butted into the show and said, I thought it was going to be Gordon Jury of Scotland, just for a laugh, really. And uh, then found out Robbie was Scottish. He didn't find that that funny. Um, and then we became friends ever since then. It's been a very long time. But yep, university mates, basically. Very loyal and long time subscriber, oh so sweet DD, asks, What was my favourite holiday and why? And the easy answer is, it was the honeymoon when me and my wife went to the Maldives. There's some pictures there behind me and it was amazing. I just loved it. It was very romantic, very relaxing. Uh, we were just in a simple beach hut, but it was beautiful. Every night we'd go out onto a sunbed, get a, get a cocktail and just watch the sunset. It was amazing. The food was fantastic. And the snorkeling was just incredible. It was, it was you know, we saw all kinds of fish there. Um, it was just a perfect holiday for me. And this is true on the last day while we were waiting for our little plane to come and pick us up and take us away again. Um, I did cry slightly because I really didn't want to leave. I, I do want to go back and stay there forever. I've got a question here from Mr. Dinos or Dinos. Sorry, Mr. Dinos or Dinos. Uh, what is the craziest thing you did as a kid? Um, I was a very good boy. I didn't really do anything very crazy. In fact, I've quite a lot of friends who said to me about 10 years ago that I was gonna have an enormous uh, middle-aged crisis because uh, I've been such a good boy for all my life. Um, and, and as you can see, what they said has come true. Uh, so I've been racking my brains trying to think of something I did. The only real thing I can think of is one day, I was in about six, five or six, and my mum, I don't know what I'd done, but, but I'd actually been naughty for once. And my mum, really cross, and she told me to, to go out the house, and I, I think she put me in the porch, actually. She put me in the, we had a little tiny porch in our house then. She put me there, and she, I just had to wait there till I calmed down. And so she went, she closed the door, went off, and then I went, oh, I'm not having that. So I left, left the front door, and just ran down. It had been raining, I remember, it was wet, and I only had my socks on. And I ran about 400 meters or so, uh, around a couple of corners, across a couple of roads, down to my best friend's house. I sort of presented myself at their house and said, uh, coming to live here now because, um, you know, I've fallen out of my mum. That's probably about the craziest thing I did. It's not that crazy. Uh, and now, this. That's right, it's the quick fire round. I'm gonna try and smash through as many of your questions as I possibly can in the shortest amount of time. Here we go, Spencer, question, can you ride a bike? Cheers, yes. Lisa Richmond, how do your neighbors feel about having a celebrity living next to them? Uh, surely house prices on your streets have rocketed. Well, a lot have gone up for sale recently, that is true. Flossy too, thank you for your donation. If you could be some kind of mythical creature, what creature would you choose to be? A dragon. Curtis Cockshaw, on a scale of 1 to 10, how vegan are you? Love you. 4. 
Connor Grist, why don't you man up and bleed your own radiators? I simply don't want to. James Phillips, thoughts on Weezer's new album? I just don't listen to contemporary music, sorry. And what does Trelfer mean? I don't know, something about trees. Dark Corners Review, do you ever worry someone will nick your phone when you leave it far away to get your wide shots? Yes. The boy John, my best friend. My question is, why? Because it's there. Oh so sweet DD, what is your guilty pleasure food stroke snack? Very expensive, very dark chocolate. See my craft chocolate video for details. Baz Sound, I know you have a cat, but do you prefer cats or dogs? Or cats? Uh, I suppose my question is really, what is your favourite animal? Ants. Oh man, who is your uh, favourite director? What are your favourite films? Alfred Hitchcock, Vertigo and Rear Window, Bong Joon-ho, Memories of Murder. Callum, coolest, weirdest animal you've ever seen in the wild? Turtle. How many goals will Scotland beat your lot by at the Euros? It'll be 2-0 to England, obviously. M&Ms or Skittles? Neither. Favourite flavour of Revel? I haven't eaten Revels in 40 years. Any embarrassing stories or secrets you can expose about either Robbie Knox or the boy John? No. And lastly, your hawk impression is outstanding. Thanks. Are, you, are there any other animals that you're good at impersonating? Yes, the turtle. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Charlie Redmond has written in. I love Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Uh, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grow up? And since your son is a kid, what does he want to be when he grows up? I can remember being wanting to be quite a few different things when I was a kid, actually. Uh, like a lot of people wanted to be like my dad, so at one stage I wanted to be a conveyancing solicitor. I remember another time where I wanted to be a chartered accountant for a while. Can't fathom why that was. But mainly the two things were footballer, obviously, and uh, writer of children's literature. Um, I'm probably not too far off those those two things even now. I mean, you never know, you never know what could happen in the future. Uh, in terms of Leo, He's um, he's a bit of a revolutionary, kind of a renaissance man, if you like. He's got it all figured out. Monday, uh, he's going to be a surgeon. Tuesdays, I think he's archaeology stroke paleontology. Wednesdays, uh, he's got his bookshop that he needs to run. Thursdays, is uh, he wants to be a postman because he, like, he likes posting things in letterboxes. And Fridays, I think, I think he wants to do inventing, so he wants to be an inventor. So he's, he's very much got that all planned out for himself already so uh, yeah he's gonna have an incredible life question here from uh, Josh Whittingham I love your channel he says thanks Josh what's your advice for a 25 year old I assume you talk about life advice not sure how qualified I am for that, but I will tell you a bit of advice I got from Tommy Boyd, who was a kids presenter when I was growing up. I did a bit of work experience with him at uh, talk radio once when I was younger. Really lovely man. And I asked him the same thing and he said, Dan, think about where you want to be when you're 40 and then follow that path as strictly as you can. And I, I, sort, I sort of did take that advice. I didn't quite get to where I, my ultimate goal of where I wanted to be when I was 40. But looking back now, not that far off. So I think that's pretty good advice. The other advice I would give is if you like travel, travel. Do as much as you can when you're young because as you get older, your options for that do start to diminish slightly. Just other things in your life happen like marriage and kids and stuff like that if, if that's the route you're gonna go down. Um, and, but you'll never regret doing as much travel as you can and experiencing other cultures and taking risks and doing silly things and all of that. Just make sure you have a lot of fun. Elise Danes asks, what's your opinion on Norwich? Well, I love Norwich, Elise. I went to university there and I lived there for three years. I thought it was a lovely place, a fine city, as the sign says. Um, yeah, I mean, I, don't, I haven't got a lot else to say. It's a very nice place. Very nice, indeed. I know Robbie Knox is a massive fan of Norwich. I'm not quite at his level. Uh, I prefer living in London. But um, yeah, beautiful place, Norwich. Just before I went to university, the thing everybody said to me 
all older people. I said, oh yeah, I'm going to university in Norwich. And they said, oh, that's a lovely part of the world. And they were right. I've got some questions here from Tom Monty about Taskmaster, uh, the show that I work on. And uh, I know quite a few of you are Taskmaster fans out there, so I thought I'd try and run through these as quickly as I can. His first one is, what exactly is my role on the show? Well, I am the edit producer, lucky enough to be the edit producer, which means I come in right at the very end after all the filming has been done. And uh, I work with three different editors and we run three suites for each series. And I work with them to take each episode down from roughly about two and a half hours down to about the 47 minutes that we get on channel four for the show. So that's roughly what I do, it's brilliant fun. I'm very lucky to have that job. Um, have I ever met Greg Davis and Ale or Alex Horn? Yes, I met both of those. Greg just a couple of times quite briefly, um, Alex a few more times, in fact, um, uh, really excitingly, I'm working with Alex on a Taskmaster related project at the moment, which I can't say anything about, but it's very exciting. Um, what series features my favourite lineup of comedians? Uh, Tom says that he likes series four with Noel Fielding and Hugh Dennis. That was the first series I did, so that actually has a definitely has a place in my heart. Um, it's really hard. I, I, you know, I loved I love all of them. I would say just about the Bob Mortimer. Sally Phillips, Nish Kumar, Mark Watson, Ashling B series. But, you know, the David Badia, Wed Gamble, Rose Matafeo, Joe Brand, uh, Katie Wick series was also fantastic. They're all great, aren't they? They're all great. Um, do I know how many future series have been commissioned? I hope it goes on forever. Yep, me too. I, th I think uh, there are at least three more still to go on Channel 4. I don't think that's a secret. And then there is a Champion of Champions one-off episode to come. I don't think that's a secret either. Hopefully I'm not giving anything away. And yeah, fingers crossed it goes on for much longer than that. It is brilliant. Love Taskmaster. Dan Mann asks, do you hope that your channel blows up to the heights of Robbie Knox? Will you continue making weekly videos forever if this channel continues at the same level of views? Do you care about views? Uh, you sure you want to enter my private hell with these kind of questions, Dan? Um, yeah, I, I do care about views, but I don't... I try not to get too worried about it, because if I did, I'd probably stop next week. Um, I'm really pleased with the number of views I get, but I'm also sort of aware that it's a very low number compared to, uh, you know, proper YouTubers, proper big YouTubers. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'd love the channel to somehow blow up and get thousands of views like Robbie does or even more like someone like Jackmate does. I mean, I'd like to just to get as many as uh, the boy John gets. Um, so that would be lovely. Well, am I gonna keep going? indefinitely if it stayed at this sort of level i honestly don't know i think I, I think i've always thought to myself all the time i'm enjoying it and it's a bit of fun and a bit of an outlet for creativity then i'll keep doing it i think the moment that i start to find it a bit of a drag and i just think and, I, I, and there's no real reason to do it then so I think I will continue doing it as long as I'm having fun and I guess as long as people are enjoying it as well at the moment might not have massive numbers but the numbers I do have hopefully are enjoying what they're watching so I will continue for now that's the best answer I can give Sean Murphy hello Sean asks favorite band artist growing up and now well my mum would delight in telling you all of you that I loved Shaking Stevens as a little boy. I used to get in the car for journeys and immediately demand Shaky was put on. Uh, I did grow out of that, although I interviewed him once a few years ago. Slightly odd man. Um, uh, but I would say if I had to pick one band from my youth, it would be Queen. I was a very big Queen fan. In fact, I was at the Freddie Mercury uh, tribute concert in 1990 or 91. I think that was the first gig I actually went to at Wembley Stadium. Um, then uh, I got a little bit older and I got very much into the band Squeeze and they probably remain my favourite band. I do love them, uh, which some of my friends tease me about, but I don't care. I love them. I think they're brilliant. Um, but I also, I would say, I also listen to a lot of Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington. I'm a fan of jazz, uh, Nina Simone, and I do love Joni Mitchell as well. So 
there we go and ben folds i'm so big fan of ben folds um that's about it for this week next time i see you my son will be demolishing my hair with a variety of garden tools or something so uh please don't forget to donate if you haven't already and thanks again to everyone who has and everyone who will do and i'll see you next week bye